Next, from the state capitol, we get reaction to Governor Quinn's State of the State address from lawmakers. Go ahead if somebody has a question. I feel like so far the feedback that I've gotten from a lot of Republicans has been that it, this speech just lacks substance that they wanted to hear, that they've been waiting for from the governor and still didn't get it. Do you share that or what are your general reactions to it? I think the, uh, the, the question maybe ask yourself is if you implemented everything he put in that speech and he certainly appealed to, I think, or tried to appeal to a lot of groups, would it mean our bond rating drops? Uh, would it mean our fiscal house is in order? Would it mean there are more jobs, businesses staying here? And I, I'm not so sure the answer is yes on that. So I, 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 do, I do give him credit. He, uh, he, he, he focused for a little bit on pensions. We need to focus on pensions. But I think we all know the problems in this, this state. And I think whatever capital you have, political capital, whatever energy you have, whatever um, focus you have, it all needs to be on the, on the fiscal issues. When By and large, I think it was more of a campaign kickoff speech than anything else. Is, is his two proposals for same-sex marriage and gun control taken together, those are hot-button social <coughs> issues in the south of interstate 80. Is that going to fly in, in most of the state, or do you think it's going to sail through? What's your, what's your well, point? I think gun control certainly is an issue that we're going to have to be discussing because of the court decision, so concealed carry is... Um, something that we have to talk about. There's a lot of interest in that issue throughout the state. Um, and so I don't think he really said much in the way of what he wanted in specifics, but th the discussion is good. Um, Same-sex marriage is another area where there's a lot of evolving opinion. Um, we, I don't believe I've seen final language on that, so we will be happy to participate in those discussions. But again, to get back to the most important issue, there was a, less than 30 seconds spent on it. On Senate Bill 1, he endorsed that. Do you guys favor that? What is your thought? Well, he's endorsed, I think, just about um, every pension bill that's been out there. And I, look, again, I, I, he, he's been pretty you know, outspoken on the need to do pension reform. I think my guess is everybody in that room today sat there and said, OK, I'm glad you're talking about pensions. We know we have to do pensions. But I, I just was saying I wanted him to turn around and say, Speaker, and ask the speaker, what are you going to do about pension reform and what's your plan? Because I think the bottom line is he can talk about pensions, we can talk about pensions, the president can talk about pensions, but until the speaker tells us what he wants to do about pensions, we don't know. And, um, I, and that's, that's, that, therein lies the problem. But look, Senate Bill 1's an idea. There, there's some merit to it. There's some downside to it. But he, the fact that he's talking about that doesn't mean other ideas are, are, are not on the table because he's, he's embraced a, a bunch of different ideas. Does it, mean you're any, does it mean you're any closer to any kind of compromise? Well, look, we've been, I, fortunately, I, I feel good about this. We've been, uh, I just met with Elaine a little while ago. Elaine and I have been working on a bipartisan bill. Um, I'm told the speaker, you know, and, and Elaine Duck Session liked it. So we're continuing to talk, and I feel good about that. But at the end of the day, What's the speaker? What does the speaker plan on doing about pension reform? No one knows. You guys on the concealed carry aspect that Quinn talked about, do you agree with the places that they ought to be prohibited? Malls, uh, sports stadiums, uh, those three places there, do you think that that's a good place to start? Well, I think it's a good place to start to think about whether that's appropriate. I think universities was another area that's been discussed sure. before. So we're open to that discussion, and I think everyone in the state wants to have a, a sensible policy that protects Second Amendment rights and at the same time has um, rational restrictions. Are you off limits in schools? You know, I'm interested in hearing that discussion. Um, I'm not an expert in public safety. We have many people that will weigh in on that, and I think that we're open to, to hearing the, the whole issue discussed. What do you think, Leader Cross? Look, I think Chris did it, answered it pretty well. I think we're going to, there's a lot of stuff on the table. We're going to analyze it. I think in one of the earlier versions, a year ago, there was, uh, there may have been at one time the exclusion of the university. So I, I, look, this is a very complicated discussion. Um, a lot of diversity in the state. Someone talked about the division between I-80. We are going to have discussions about mental health. I think you have to have discussions about video games. And I know we've gone down that road a little bit in the state, but I have a, we have a six-year-old son at our home, at our house, who's got an Xbox. And those games are, uh, all they do are um, focus on killing people on a regular, intense basis, and I don't think they're healthy. And I think that should be part of the discussion as well. What about the governor's uh, pitch on increasing the minimum wage to ten bucks an hour? What do you think? Look, I, I, again, I think that there are going to be some things in here you like. There are going to be some things you don't like. I think we need to focus on the big issues, like the pension, so we have 
a vibrant, someday, a vibrant economy and businesses that want to stay here and come here and expand here. And you, you're, you're not getting that until you issue the, the, the elephant in the room. The only issue that matters right now, everything flows from it, is the pension debate. To what extent do you think that the, the potential rival, the rivalry between the governor and Lisa Madigan uh, in, in the governor's race is going to impact what in the speech gets done and what doesn't? I definitely think everything that goes on this spring will be viewed through the political lens of the upcoming governor's race, not only between the parties, but also um, within the parties. What, is, what does that mean? Does that mean pension reform is less likely? I don't think so. Again, I think that um, that issue is one that, that I believe we will act on that in one form or another um, before the election. How great is the governor's political exposure uh, if, if, if there's a failure on pensions? Significant, I would think. Tom, <coughs> where, where would you stand on, on SB1 as far as the trade off health care? Is that something that yeah, I'm not you a, can live with? No, I don't think that. Uh, I think all you're doing is you're shifting one liability to another, but I think the bigger problem is uh, the savings are the pale in comparison to some of the things that are outlined in the bill that Elaine and Daniel Biss and I've been working on and have, and have others. So you've got to do this in a meaningful way to have an impact, I think, on the bond rating. And um, you, you've got, you've got a, at a minimum, a $90 billion unfunded liability. You've got to put a sizable dent in there. And I don't think Senate Bill 1 does that. What's the minimum? What's the floor? What do you have to have to absolutely save for it to, to be a, well, a, a starter for you, I guess? Look, I, the, 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 there's some that I think you have to be up around the $30 billion range. And I think that, I think you have to, if you're not careful and you don't do it right, you're going to be back here in, in the not so distant future. And I don't think, I don't think this body, nor do I think retirees, annuitants, the state, the bond houses, the businesses, want us to be coming back to pensions on a, you know, every five years. Let's do it, let's do it right. Can I ask a question that was just asked in a slightly different way? Uh, can this governor be reelected if there's no pension reform done? You know, I honestly don't know the answer to that. Um, you know, there's obviously the dynamic there that that might help another candidate, so um, I, I'm not sure. He has a very populist approach, which we saw in the speech, and I think many of the groups he's appealing to, um, you know, are not focused on pension reform necessarily. Um, and he's, I think, made an all-out effort to sort of begin that coalition to build his base. The, the kind of the funny thing about it is, and the sad thing is, I think as a CEO, he does wear the the collar on a lot of these things, but he didn't cause a mess. And I mean, here's a guy that comes in and takes the job. The last 12 years, you've had this place run by President Cullerton and Speaker Madigan. I think from a policy standpoint, they've done some awful things from, from spending, from borrowing, to not making the pension payments, et cetera. Um, and past General Assemblies have had some exposure on pension liability. So it, it would be ironic that perhaps he, he suffers a, in a gubernatorial race because he didn't solve a problem that that he didn't create, but that the, the folks on his side of the aisle have, have all, are, are wearing a lot of the, the, the blame. The pension issue, Tom, is a cost shift. Is that something that's still a hang up uh, within your caucus? Yeah, I, look, I think a lot of people are concerned about that. The governor talked about today some school districts that are really suffering, and, and the, the, the pension, um, the crowding out has become an issue for school districts. A lot of school districts are suffering. Um, because we've cut state aid by a billion dollars, we're late by a billion dollars, property tax values have gone down. So I, you're seeing a lot of concern con continuing on, on our side of the aisle um, on that whole issue because the shift. Now, the more you uh, do benefit reform, the, 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 that diminishes the issue or the impact on cost shift. But, but yeah, there's, there's still concern. Right. And to his credit, the Senate President <coughs> has agreed to separate that issue, which I think is a step in the right direction, makes it more likely that we get something done. You're watching the Illinois Channel, an independent nonprofit corporation formed to provide gavel to gavel coverage of Illinois state government and other public affairs events taking place across Illinois. 